We're taking a look at our homework on page 298, specifically questions 2 and 3. Question 2 said a roller coaster trolley begins its journey 5.25 meters above the ground, um, and as the motor tows it to the top of the first hill, it gains uh, 420,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. Here's the mass of the trolley and its passengers. Uh, how far is the top of the hill above the ground? All right, what we... Uh, we've got to recognize here is that we're not talking about a potential energy that we have, but rather we're talking about a, a gain or a change in potential energy that we have. So there's a couple ways to tackle this question. The way that I would do it, the way that I did this question the first time that I did it is, is this. I said delta E, the change in potential energy, is equal to the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. Okay, that makes sense? Like, Change delta anything is anything final minus anything initial, right? Change in velocity is VF minus VI. Uh, change in uh, position is DF minus DI. Change in uh, potential energy is EF minus EI. My change in energy is 4.20 times 10 to the 5 joules. My final energy, my final energy here is MGF, sorry, MGHF. It's like final energy is final potential, MGH final, minus the initial potential energy. Hey, what's the initial potential energy? Well, it's MGH initial, right? But what's MGH initial? Well, let's sub in some numbers for that. 4.20 times 10 to the 5 joules equals my mass is 875 times 9.81 times HF. You agree with that so far? Yeah? Okay. So... Uh, we're going to minus uh, from that 875 times 9.81. What's my initial height? What's my initial height? 5.25. All right, so let's solve for HF here. Okay, let's get what's on the left, uh, sorry, what's, uh, what's, what's subtracted from the first term there, MGH initial. Let's say 875 times 9.81 times 5.75. That gives me, on the right-hand side there, 49,356. So let's say... Sorry, what is it? Uh, 4. what? Oh, is it 5.25? Right there? Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's... So let's do that again, then. I calculated that wrong. Actually, let's get 875 times 9.81 first. 875 times 9.81 gives me 8,585.83.75. And now let's subtract. Let's figure out what that number is again now. 875 times 9.81 times 5.25. 45064.6875. Okay, now we take that to the other side by adding. So, what do we got? 420,000. Uh, plus 45064 gives me on the left hand side 40, 465,000. Now let's divide that by 8583.75. Gives me an H final of 54 meters. 54.2 meters. Now how many people did it this way? Okay, how many people said, uh, how many people calculated basically the change in height? using EP is equal to MGH, so I said, okay, this is my change in energy. I can find the change in height using MGH, and then added 5.25 to it. Okay. Um, e either way is fine, right? Either way is fine. The danger of doing it that way, it's correct, and it will absolutely get marked correct every time. But the danger of doing it that way is that technically the equation is not M times G times delta H, and that's what some of you did, right? Uh, the equation is E is equal to MGH. We learned here a couple of days ago that when we tried saying the change in kinetic energy was one-half M delta V squared, it didn't work, right? This one does work by putting a delta in there, even though that's not the equation. This one didn't work 
by putting a delta in there. How come the first one, EP is equal to MGH, did work, and this one didn't? Why could I do the delta in there and not this one? Well, because H is directly related to E here, right? It's, it's a direct relationship. Here, it's a squared relationship. So there is a danger, okay, of, of trying to change an equation um, EK is equal to 1 half mv squared and put a delta in there, or EP is equal to MGH and, and solving for the delta, the change, the change in height there, okay? Um, because technically that's not the equation. If it's a linear relationship, it still works. But there's a danger because if it's not a linear relationship, sometimes we just get in the habit of doing it and sometimes we do it when we can't. All right, let's take a look at number three now. Um, three is a good question. Um, one of those ones you've got to think about a little bit. But listen, just like any other question that we do this year, there's always a place to start. There's always a place to start. Um, even if you don't know how to finish this question, I saw as I was walking around, I saw a number of people had started this question and just weren't sure how to finish it off. Listen, that's okay. If you're trying to do a question and you can't quite finish it off, that's okay. Um, but everybody should have a place to start here. We want to find the change in potential energy uh, that the block experiences. Look, change in energy is equal to final minus initial energy. And we're talking about the change in potential. So we're going to say it's MGH final minus, well, what's the initial energy? Zero. So the change in potential energy is simply going to be equal to MG, M times G times the final height. All right. Everybody should get that. Everybody. Like, there is zero reason why we can't get this other than I'm afraid to try. I look at it. Oh, an angle? Oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, you don't know what to do with the angle. You know, what to, you know how to start. Now, it does get trickier at this point, and I can see maybe some people having some struggles at this point. Okay, that's fair enough. We don't know what the final height is, but... If we think about it, you know what, we can find this. This is 20 meters high, or 20 meters long, 35 degrees. We want to find this, right? We want to find this. This would be my final height. So all I'm going to do is use a little bit of trigonometry there. I'm going to say sine 35 degrees is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is simply equal to 20 sine 35. Gives me a value of 11.4715. So we sub that in here now. We got our mass here of 200 and, was that 250? Yeah. 250 kilograms times 9.81 times the final height of, I erase that, 11.4715. And when we do that, we should get 2.81 times 10 to the 4 joules. So other than this, other than this, there's no reason to not get this question. Like, other than this, it's easy, right? Do not look at this question and say, I got an angle. I don't know what to do with that angle. I, I don't know how to do the question. Okay, look at it and say, I'm going to do what I can do, and I'm going to try to do the rest of it. If I can't get the, do the angle thing, then, I'll, then, I'll, then that's okay. I'll worry about that when the time comes. But I at least know generally how to do this question. 